I'm starting up the stream. Looks like the stream is running. Hi everyone, I'm TigerHawk3, and today we're going to work a little more on the deck. Big surprise. Okay. A few things planned. First, we're going to make the max len attribute uh, not actually read only, but uh, write once. You can assign one when you create a deck, and then you can't change it anymore. There isn't really a write once thing in Python. You can kind of try. You can make like properties with no um, with no setter. Um, you can make private variables, meaning uh, prefaced with one or two underscores. Uh, none of that works. But we're going to get close to making it work, sort of. Uh, so we are going to make um, make it a property with no setter. And uh, you'll see that it's uh, popular to make uh, properties with, um, uh, what's it called? That just, just operate on private variables. There's no such thing as private variables. Uh, like you might have a length attribute of a rectangle and you have a, a getter and a setter and a property and it just returns underscore length. So if someone wants, they can change underscore length and then it's different. So, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to have, uh, we're not going to save something because it's right once. So we're going to write it once and then not save anything for it to refer back to. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of this, we're going to say, type itself dot max line. That means it is a class attribute but that's okay. We'll still be able to have different ones because it will be a property. This is the built-in function property. I'm going to actually, instead of dumping lambdas in here, I'm going to do it the right way. Um, get for self return. I need something else. Uh, M max line. And that's going to return uh, m. Set will be, uh, I'm not going to overwrite the, I'm not going to mask the set built-in function, even though I'm not using it in this method, because I don't want to mask it. It's bad practice. Self and x. And that is going to, so this uh, right here is the, getter and we're going to instead of not having this and having this be you know max len we're going to add this and then that means that this is uh, bound on function definition so when we define a function m is set to the value that it retrieves for max len right when we define it not when we call it and this is going to raise an attribute error. And we will do that with this. Because I don't want to dump the whole line, raise an attribute error with what's it, and then the user would get an attribute error with the message. So I believe uh, for my tests, this uh, is the only thing that will display. This will be the line that uh, caused the error. And I want um, I want this um, I'm going to go ahead and yes, I already wrote some of it um, is 
this a little long? 110? I think it's okay-ish. We have other things that are longer. It's just, that's, that's, that's what we're gonna, hmm. I'm gonna pull this back out a little bit. All right. <coughs> when you have two string literals right next to one another, or one right after the other, they are automatically concatenated. So we get this empty string plus this format string. Uh, also note that instead of repro type self and stopping there, we're going to access the name attribute. So if we don't include this, we get, uh, uh, what's it called? We get opening angle bracket, class, name of the class, closing angle bracket. We don't want that because it doesn't usually show up in errors. We want the name of the type, not the type object itself. Not writable. Okay. So now we have a property. First, we pass it the getter. And then we pass it the setter. That should be that. Cool. If you don't want a particular error and you just want it to fail in whatever way, like can't set a property sort of thing, then, um, then you could just, uh, not include one at all and it just wouldn't have a setter and you'd uh that that would be that but we want the specific error message so we're going to do that and we're going to use a traditional function definition because we want a raise statement can't really do that with a lambda uh, okay so that's one thing let's test that Um, 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 good. Uh, where am I? Let's see, documents, Python scripts, we're in here, good. High. If I wanted, I could have imported OS and used OS dot change there or something, and then change the working directory. But I don't want to. Uh, import dec d equals dec dot dq with a maxlin of I don't know three d dot maxlin gives us three d dot max len equals five attribute max len of dq objects is not writable cool and all we got in the error message instead of seeing raise attribute error attribute whatever of repro etc we just get So that's cool. Alrighty. That's one thing down and a couple to go. What next? What next? Uh, let's, let's look for all of those. Race index error. We're going to change this to do that. And we will, let's actually try that. Just right now, make sure. Import deck equals deck, as long as I spell it right, dot dq, d dot pop. Uh, I didn't save it. Maybe I should save it. Pop. 
from an empty deck. Empty string. Good. Very good. So that's fine, just fine. And let's keep looking for rays. I kind of think this should be... I don't want it at the same level because then it, it kind of looks like it could be just separate statements on new lines and I don't want to indent it for spaces because then it looks like uh, part of a compound statement. Uh, PEP8 has uh, suggestions and guidelines and rules for this sort of thing. In case anyone wants to check that out. Actually, let me, is there anything else I wanted to change? I wanted to change the, the name thing. Okay. So I'm not only looking for that, I want to see if they have the repro of the name. Pop from index, no. Ha. Huh. Repro item is not in deck. That's acceptable. That's fine the repro of the item. Ah, here we go. Repro of type I. All right. And it's not just the type. We want the name of the type. You've probably heard of Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and Alice in Wonderland is a, a ostensibly a children's story, but then not really, because there's lots of little word games and puzzles and funny things, like uh, there's a song uh, that the characters are talking about at some point, uh, and like the song is called uh, Haddock's Eyes or something, and but that's not the name of the song, and that's not what the song is. So they have the song, the name of the song, what the song is, what the song is about, and the words of the song. There's all sorts of kind of meta attributes of this song object. So we don't want the type, which is a type object. We want the type object's name. There we go. And we want to do that here too. No type, whatever. Just cleaning up those error messages. Choice must be what's under the thing. Next one. I hope this works. Which one is this? Uh, with multiple things in there. I think that works. Attempt to assign sequence of some size to an extended slice. Okay, that's uh, slice assignments that change, would change the size of the deck with extended slices. Let's, let's go ahead and try that one right now. Turn on PowerShell. Exit pi. Deck. We have our deck. Uh, we don't want that. What we want is uh, neat. This is the uh, instead of d equals d plus range 4, or d plus equal range 4, or d dot extend range 4, uh, I just call d. And the magic method that we put in for, for d a session or two ago is uh, concatenation. So there we go. So I have a deck with things in it. Um, 
D. This is an extended slice. Equals something. Attempt to assign sequence of size 2 to extended slice of size 1. And the only line of code that we're shown is this. Because usually you don't uh, you don't see if it's a, a specific error that gets raised uh, intentionally with like the raise statement, we don't want to see that. So like import collections uh, sequels collections dot deck with a range. I don't, I don't know. Doesn't matter. That's not what I wanted to do. A max len of three. C dot max len equals five. We get attribute error. This attribute is not writable. And that's a, a specific error message. And uh, not just saying that the property can't be set, which is the generic thing, because it's not using a property, it's written in C. Uh, and so this is what we get. And uh, there's no uh, it doesn't show us the line of code that caused that because it would just be, you know, raise attribute error. That's boring. So we can get rid of that and that worked. Let's go back here. Oh, there's, uh, there's people in chat. I have, uh, I don't know if you recall, I'm down to one monitor now because uh, my primary monitor's backlight went out couple weeks ago. So instead of this much space, I now have this much. Let's see what people are saying. Yellow man says, why with the yodeling? I'm not yodeling. It's it's too uh too late at night to to yodel. Uh that's my reason for not yodeling. Ordinarily I totally would, but uh JC Appy asks, what would be an application of this program? This program is a deck, meaning a double-ended queue. It's a, a data structure, uh, not specific to Python, um, just a general computer science thing, uh, not even computer science, um, um, just a data structure that you can use and see in your everyday life. Um, let's say, you have uh, uh, books on a bookshelf, and you kind of have the bookshelf in like a, an alcove, so it doesn't take up too much space. And you can reach to one side and get a book from an end, or you can go to the other side and get the book from that end. But if you want to get a book from the middle, you have to like reach your arm and it's all inconvenient not the best example, but uh, a double-ended queue is a, a queue, meaning like a queue, like people waiting in line, where you can uh, not only put things onto one end and remove things from the other, but you can do either operation from either end, and uh, being a computer science implementation of it, it's, uh, it can hold arbitrary objects, and there's other operations to find the the length and uh, uh, remove items in it, all that sort of stuff. But uh, if you need that, don't use this one because uh, it's written in Python and it's going to be slow. Uh, use collections.deck, which is written in C and then a lot faster. Or uh, if you want matrix multiplication and vector operations, try a suitable library for that, like NumPy or Pandas, which are also written in C, I believe. <coughs> C is great. It's really fast. I never use it myself. I invoke it all the time. And you can have a Python program that does a whole bunch of stuff and it's like this long because that one line calls something that's written in C. And then your Python program is magically fast because it's not actually written in Python, which is perfectly fine and not cheating at all. 
Uh, this is that. What else did I do? Uh, where am I? Are we doing this? I think. Sequence, yes. Okay, that's fine. Raise, find the next raise. Don't have any repro of the type. Okay. A repro of old, not the type of something. So that's okay. Oh goodness. Kind of a long line, 117. You can see the column count over here. This is how many columns you would have, including the carriage return. Whether or not it has a carriage return, you could be at the last line and not have a line feed at the end, and it would still show one at the beginning. But uh, so this means there are 117 like visible columns and the last character uh, is an indication to go to the next line that's what a line feed does so some people will tell you that uh, chat GC happy seems to enjoy my analogies but uh, some people will tell you that you need to make your code 80 characters wide at all times. They are wrong. It is a matter of opinion, but their opinion is wrong. Uh, this is probably starting to get a little long. I just wanted, you know, one generator expression. But, uh,. See if we can find near the next raise. See this? This is a hundred columns, and all it is—it's not a a bunch of stuff shoehorned into one line, which I occasionally do for fun because it's fun. But uh, it's just raise a type error, and then it's a format string. That's all it is. Can't multiply a sequence by non int or iterable of type, repro type other. And that is something with which we want to, you know, do that. And even this, this is 88 columns. Would it really be that much better if we limited, limited it to this far? I don't think so. The original reason for this was a uh, hardware. Related. You would have uh, terminals, not terminal emulators like uh, command.exe or PowerShell or what have you, actual terminal machines with uh, asso associated printers. Like when you say print some variable, back in the old days there would be a printer and it would, you know, physically print things. On the monitor is also physically happening, but uh, I mean, you have, you know, electrons hitting the surface of the whatever, but, um, I mean, like on paper of some kind, generally, not, uh, electronic. And those had 80 columns. So that was all you could do. That's the entire reason, and they had uh, 24 rows, and so that's that's what that is. If you open uh, a command prompt on any fresh installation of something that no one has yet messed with, it will be uh, 80 columns wide and 24 rows long, because uh, that's that's the standard still because it was the standard and so now people still like that and there's like more rationalizations of it nowadays to keep using it that if you have 80 character uh, 80 character lines then you can uh, get like a nice regular monitor uh, modern something not a, an old terminal from like the 70s 
and you can have uh, multiple windows of you know a code editor and you can see multiple things on it which you know if you want to do that that's fine or you could get like a second monitor which most people do if they're on a computer a lot and they care about you know getting actual work done on it um, so I think it's kind of silly to stick to 80 I mean if you have like 300 characters and like even on a large monitor it has to like wrap through multiple lines or you have to scroll a bunch then uh, if that works for you then great but uh, the number of people for whom that will work uh, slowly decreases as you get more and more characters but uh, 80 is antiquated or 79 because you have the line feed etc but uh, I think something like this is fine this is 88 just a, just a little more because if I were to split this up it would be even more annoying so yeah 80 is just a guideline and we're not going to follow it other type of this dot name okay Python classes that you may take at various local schools will uh, take points off for doing this. They are wrong to do that. Oh, more stuff in chat. I gotta move things around. Uh, JC says, uh, I have a second monitor. I really feel your pain on that. Yeah, it's kind of annoying to, you know, because I have the browser that shows chat and stuff, then I have Notepad, and I have a PowerShell window, and I have uh, OBS, the streaming software, and uh, whatever else I need. Which kind of just got things one on top of the other. Uh, and JC says it's all about the clean code. I usually use between 100 and 110. Sounds reasonable. I'd read that. I'd read that. I'd stand on that. Uh, now where's my stuff? Here, there, thingy, okay. Other dot name. This is 97. It's also fine. Here's a bunch. Max line must be non negative. This is up in init. We must have wrapped around already. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Is there any more? That's it. So this was the first one that we created, and then we went through and changed them all, and then we wrapped back around to the top. As you can see, the scroll bar up here, I believe. I think you can see that. Yeah. And change those. So. We are good to go. Now keep in mind, if you wanted, you could um, you could write another getter and setter. I keep in mind. I will show you. Okay. Import deck d equals deck dot dq maxlen equals four d dot maxlen equals seven. Can't do that. Oh really? Did I did I turn on the thing? I could have sworn I turned on the thing. Anyway, this is this is all I've got. So import the deck, make a deck. 
try to assign a new max len and we can't because we have a mostly empty line and not writable. Great. But what if I want to? I will do the following. I have this written down somewhere, but let's see if I can just write it without looking at a, a cheat sheet or notes as they are also known. Um, def g, we're going to write a new getter and setter. Actually, we will start with d dot underscore max len equals start with four. So now it has a new underscore max len attribute. That's fine, right? Because when we ask for a max len, it's still retrieving the same value and has a setter that um, every time I say setter, I think of Irish setters, which are adorable dogs. Anyway, um, I think Irish setter is the kind of dog that Captain Janeway has. I do believe, yes, Captain Janeway has an error setter. Um, where am I and what am I doing? I am right here, okay. So now it has an underscore max len, which is fine. And here's what we'll do. Uh, return self dot max len. Instead of, uh, return something that was bound on the function definition because I have def g self instead of self and m equals max line or something I just have self and so it's going to just return a value that it will look up when you ask for it when you call the function s is going to have self and a new value and that's going to do uh, self dot underscore max len equals x and now that dot dq um, dot max len property with g and s d dot max len is currently four d dot max len i want to be seven and lo and behold now it is seven behold so that's about it it has been defeated security hole it's not a security hole because everyone knows you can't actually do that in python uh in c sure java sure but uh actually java i'm just guessing but you know probably seems like the sort of thing they'd want um actually yeah there's you know private and public what's it's and you could just have uh the underscore max len be uh private and then there would be no setter for the max line. Um, so yeah, I had also been reading a bit online to see if there were other more uh, effective ways of doing this. And I found some stuff, most of it dealing with properties and one being a uh, class decorator actually that was uh, that provided a new uh, set attribute method, the uh, this magic method, which uh, if defined is called instead of the default behavior when you do uh, my object dot my attribute equals some new value to set an attribute, right? So 
it had like I don't know dozen twenty lines something to create a uh, decorator uh, with a function that returned a new subclass of whatever object or whatever class you were decorating and it added this set attribute and every time you try to uh, change a particular attribute that you had indicated as being read-only uh, it would look in the uh, it would look in the objects uh, dictionary and somewhere else I don't remember else but it would see if the name you were trying to set was something and if it was uh, uh, blocked from writing and if you were forbidden from accessing it then it would pop an error message how nice but you could defeat it just by deleting the new set attribute method like literally del uh, uh, that's it one line just delete that because it was just uh, anytime I make a class with this decorator indicating which things are read-only I want to have a custom set attribute that checks for things and etc you just delete it yeah I found that on Stack Overflow with a couple dozen upvotes and no downvotes. That doesn't work very well. Uh, the author seemed very proud of it though. Said he was uh, surprised at the attention it got and made a package for it on PyPy and uh, you can install it with pip, all that sort of thing. And you can do it like this. And for something that you have to download and install and decorate your class. Uh, oh, and it homogenized all the class names. Every time you got the name of the class, you could decorate a class A and you could decorate a class B and they would all have the, the same name of, you know, uh, new class or whatever it was. And defeated with this simple line just de delete it just delete the new set attribute but as you can see this whole thing this is kind of optional so if I wanted I could have omitted all of this let's remove that could have omitted all of this and then um, and just made this uh, this line with the property be property and then uh, lambda self m equals max len colon uh, property lambda doesn't matter m equals max len uh, m could have literally just done this instead of this and all of that but the reason I didn't is because I wanted to raise a specific error and uh, I figured I might as well define the other one similarly whatever right what am I doing just that one thank you and to defeat this, which could have been one tiny line segment, would require all of this stuff. Oh, also that. Make a new underscore max len, and then define new getter and setter, and then make it a property, and then you would be able to mess with it. So this simple 
properties thing allows you to make a an attribute sort of read only or what write once or what have you um, pretty briefly and requiring more effort to defeat while the solution I found with the decorator uh, required much more work to set up and uh, could be defeated with that. Anyway, if you're watching my channel, you know I tend to go on. <coughs> so, that's the deck. Today we changed, um, we changed MaxLen to be close to right once, and we changed error messages not to the error message with a specific raise statement, not to actually show the whole raise statement. And we changed error messages that involve uh, displaying the type of an object to display that type's name. I will show you briefly what I mean. Uh, class str type this dot name is string. See? Class with the angle brackets and this one has no class. Because uh, this is actually a type. A equals type. And B is the uh, type of that dot name. What is A? And what is B? What's the type of A? It's a type. The type is class type, which is type type. I'm not kidding. And what's the type of B? What do you think it's going to do? It's a string, because it's, it's the name. Similar to how we check uh, uh, if name equals main. Probably seen that a lot. This, you know, name, name of the the calling module, right, is equal to a string. So the name is a string, and here the name is also a string. So we have our type, which has a repro of class whatever, and we have that type's name, which is just a string of that type's name. So that's what we did Today, the old man says in chat, that was some lovely yodeling. <laughs> One day I'll do a, a stream that isn't at night, and I'll have the, the doors and windows closed so I don't, you know, scare the wildlife. Then maybe I'll yodel. Who knows? So, that is the stream. That is the deck. Now, once again, I don't know what else I would change in here. Um, if I think of anything, I will do that. But uh, other than that, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, works fine, reasonably fast as I can make it. Um, tidy. It's got dock strings. So, kind of done. And, uh, yeah. I don't know what else I'll do next. Maybe uh, uh, the point of sale uh, stream was has has been very popular, and by very popular I mean relative to my other videos, it's by far the most watched. I guess people really want to 
see how to make a point of sale thing, a lemonade stand. So maybe I'll do that with a GUI instead of uh, enter the the digit for the item you'd like to purchase and choose a selection of, you know, press, you know, five to show the cart or whatever. Uh, it'll be graphical. So you can like click to simulate scanning an item and there'll be like various buttons for add this and remove that and uh, add so many quantity of this scanned item. And uh, so maybe something like that. And uh, was there something else? I don't know. But that's a possibility. Uh, Uzi TV in chat says, need more lol. I might, perhaps. My computer has been having some uh, frame drop issues. So even without uh, streaming. Uh, so playing lol that already is kind of stuttery and then being streaming on top of that, I don't know if it'll work so well, but we will see. And uh, that is all. Thank you for watching and uh, ad free now because YouTube is YouTube and decided that uh, since I'm not a large enough channel, uh, I might be spam. Like we can't tell yet with 400 videos, but, but anyway, that is all. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.